Good morning, friends. It's uh, Thursday. If it's a day that ends in Y, we can talk about plagiarism on the fringe. I have finally read the book. I took a trip to Ohio uh, some week and a half ago now. Um, and with all the flight delays and cancellations and that sort of thing, I got through the entire um, book, Graham Hancock's America Before. I would have to say, you know, you're supposed to say something nice and a critique. There are some interesting ideas in here. Um, there are several, I, I think, factual and logical errors that I would like to discuss at some point. Um, we'll get to those, you know, and address it on substance. Um, there's other things you can critique about it or whatever, but it is what it is. It's selling a lot of copies. Everybody's talking about it, yada, yada, yada. So one thing that caught my attention, and it's what I want to talk about today, is um, somebody commented on one of the previous video posts that all Graham Hancock does is rip off Josh Reeves. Let me find that comment. Here it is. Daniel French says, Hancock stole much of his research from Josh Reeves, a little-known, rough-around-the-edges layman Texan researcher, just so you know. I've listened to several of Josh Reeves' uh, uh, programs, let's call them, about Rockwall and, and other stuff, and I subscribed to his YouTube channel. And the other day while I was sitting in the airport, um, after having already finished uh, Graham Hancock's book, I, I listened to a recent video of his where he claimed that uh, Graham Hancock plagiarized him. Uh, let's play a little bit of that so you can see exactly what he says. Okay, so the setup is that Josh Reeves claims that Graham Hancock stole directly from Josh Reeves' movie uh, called Secrets of Ancient America or something like that from 2013, that he, he took words from the script that Josh Reeves wrote himself and he um, used them. So here, here is the what originally got me to it. So he's going to give you the overview here. Then we're going to go to the actual video and see what he says. I had people who were Graham Hancock supporters watch that video and say, oh, no, I don't see anything wrong here. There's not any proof of that he plagiarized anything in there. And yet I show in the video that he clearly says stuff that's taken 100% out of the script of my film, which I wrote. The... the he clearly says stuff that's taken 100% out of the film script that Josh Reeves wrote. Um, that's his claim. So let's go to where he shows a clip of that video of, from his film, and let's, let's see the words that he claims he wrote. All right, here we go. So here's uh, Josh Reeves' Proof of Plagiarism by Graham Hancock. Graham Hancock has for years plagiarized the work of alternative historians, blah, 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 his most recent book. He has lifted information directly from the 2013 Josh Reeves film. The following quote was taken from the Daily Mail article about Hancock's book, America Before. Uh, this is the part that he's upset about, a leap to the sky via Orion. He doesn't like that wording. He says, Josh Reeves says that he wrote that. He came up with that. Uh, and here's the following clip taken from the 2013 Josh Reeves film, Lost Secrets of Ancient America, where Graham Hancock directly took this information. Uh, you can watch the whole thing if you want to. We're not going to. Um, I've gotten my notes here. Go to about 525. Here is um, the clip here of Josh Reeves reading his script for his movie. Here we go, let's take a listen. It's a complex of beliefs regarding the death of human beings. At a crucial point in the dying process, the free soul, the one that is self-aware and has an identifiable personality in relation to the deceased, separates from the body, leaving behind the life soul, a mindless force which can be dangerous to the living, trapped in or near the physical remains. The free soul remains present in the vicinity for a brief time, then gathers the spirit version of various tools given to it by the living and sets off towards the west on its final journey. The free soul and the life soul are represented by the skull and bone. Okay, that's plenty. So that's that's very nice prose. Uh, I, it, it, <laughs> as a... As a college professor, I am unfortunately more familiar with plagiarism than I would like. And um, that's very nicely written, what was read there, and it immediately struck a chord in me because I realized I had just read it somewhere before. I had read it in Graham Hancock's book. Let me read from Graham Hancock's book. 
At a crucial point in the dying process, the free soul, the one that is self-aware and has an identifiable personality in relation to the deceased, separates from the body, leaving behind the life soul, a mindless force which can be dangerous to the living, trapped in or near the physical remains. The free soul remains present in the vicinity for a brief time, then sets off toward the west on its final journey. And it, it goes on. Now, so what is written in Graham Hancock's book is actually what Josh Reeves says. The problem for Reeves, however, is that he, he didn't write that. If you look at Graham Hancock's book, that is a quote. There's the, the full quote there. You, you can see it's pulled, and he's got a reference. You go to the reference, and it turns out it is a 2007 article by a scholar named George Langford um, from an edited volume. Here's the paper, The Path of Souls. We can scroll down to page 176 because Graham Hancock put his reference in there correctly. At a crucial point in the dying process, the free soul, the one that is self-aware and has an identifiable personality in relation to the deceased, separates from the body, leaving behind the life soul, a mindless force which can be dangerous to the living, trapped in or near the physical remains. In relation to the deceased, separates from the body, leaving behind the life soul, a mindless force which can be dangerous to the living, trapped in or near the physical remains. The free soul remains present in the vicinity for a brief time, then gathers the spirit version of various tools given to it by the living and sets off towards the west on its final journey. The Here's a little bit more. The portal in the hand must be entered by a leap at the optimum time, which is a 10 minute window which occurs once each night from November 29th when the hand vanishes into the water in the west just at dawn to April 25th when the hand sinks at dusk, not to be seen again for six months. During that winter period, the yeah. So again, that section uh, appears in Graham Hancock's book. The portal in the hand must be entered by leap at the optimum time, which is a 10-minute window, which occurs once each night from November 29th. Blah blah blah. It's right there. It's a pulled quote again from that same paper, which we can go, we can read along in the paper along with Josh Reeves. The Reeves video located in talking. the area native tribes called the Hand Constellation. The portal in the hand must be entered by a leap at the optimum time, which is a 10 minute window which occurs once each night from November 29th when the hand vanishes into the water in the west just at dawn to April 25th when the hand sinks at dusk, not to be seen again for six months. During that winter period, the portal is on the horizon for a breathless few minutes each night and the free souls must enter at that time or be lost. The hand constellation is actually the bottom half of the Orion constellation. So that, that is uh, plagiarism 101 there. I don't see any attribution on the screen. Whoops. Um, that Josh Reeves says that he's quoting from here. He mixes in passages from Langford's paper into his own. You know, he claims in that other video that he wrote this script. Uh, maybe somewhere in this movie he acknowledges that. Um, but he certainly did not invent those words about leaping and portals and all that kind of stuff. He took that directly from um, a scholar's work. So there's that. That's level one of the plagiarism. Level two, um, which I think is, I don't know, probably the more interesting one. You know, when I when I read Graham Hancock's comparison of the Mississippian religion and cosmology stuff to the ancient Egyptians, I was like, oh, well, that's pretty interesting. There are a lot of interesting parallels there with Orion and that sort of thing. Um, what I think. Josh Reeves' film makes clear is that, you know, Graham Hancock didn't invent that idea. Josh Reeves talks about it in, in 2013. I'm also positive that um, Josh Reeves, well, I'm not positive. I, I can't say yet. I'll tell you what, five bucks to the person who finds me, the first, the first instance, the earliest instance of somebody comparing Mississippian religious iconography, cosmology, and that sort of thing to the ancient Egyptians. I bet it goes way back. I bet you're probably talking um, who knows, late 1800s, early 1900s. That's a guess. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm, I'm, I would be very, very surprised. I will eat this five by seven card if it doesn't go back any further than 2013. Um, I'm sure it's a much older idea. The interesting thing though, in Graham Hancock's book, he presents it as though he kind of stumbled upon um, that comparison all by himself. Uh, he says, you know, he, he's going to Moundville, he sees the rattlesnake disc. There's the rattlesnake disc there with the hand that's supposed to represent uh, the Orion constellation. There we go, rattlesnake disc. He says he sees that 
and then uh, he he realizes through uh, something interpretive he read at Moundville um, that that's associated with Orion. He says, I was nonplussed. I tried to prepare thoroughly, but it looked like I'd missed something important in my background reading before starting out on this trip. The connection of the constellation of Orion to the land of the dead was a fundamental aspect of the ancient Egyptian religion, and it felt weirdly like coming home, that comfortable intimacy of familiar territory, to find it here in a Native American religion. But I should have known about this. I don't buy for one second that he had no idea that those similarities were out there. Um, he would come all the way here and go to Moundville and not have done the very basic reading on, on Mississippian religion. Uh, it just seems silly. I don't know. You, were we all born yesterday? Uh, I don't know. So my conclusion for the morning is that Josh Reeves gets an F for plagiarism, which I will gladly, gladly uh, revisit that grade if he or anybody else can show me where he properly attributes the material that he used from George Langford's article because it sure looks to me based on what he has posted so far um, that he's just borrowing passages and fitting them in there maybe there's somewhere in the film where he explains that I don't know you can't watch the whole movie you have to pay for it so I'm not doing that um, maybe send it send it to me for free so I'll gladly correct if wrong um, so there's an F there and this whole, you know, I didn't, I, I, I had never realized that uh, Orion was a thing in Mississippian religion, the, the story that we get from Graham Hancock, um, I think is, uh, just doesn't, doesn't pass the smell test to me. Surely he was aware of that. And in fact, um, if you look at Greg Little's book called Path of Souls 2014, he talks about all kinds of Mississippian cosmology and symbolism, probably drawing on, on the same work that, that Langford's paper was in. Uh, so on. I haven't read that closely for a while, um, but those 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 ideas are are out there. And for Graham Hancock to say that he just showed up and couldn't believe that he had missed something um, sounds a little bit ridiculous. It's a Josh Reeves comment. Uh, I want people to know he's not some genius, Graham Hancock, that came up with this on his own. He took stuff word for word from my film, and I'm not the only one he's done this to. As long as people have the opportunity to know he rips other people off claiming his work, that's all I want. I think it's very likely that he took the whole idea of a, a connection between Egypt and uh, ancient Mississippians. He got that from somewhere. I don't buy for a second that he just stumbled on it when he got out of his car at Moundville. It's true that the same words appear in the Josh Reeves film as appear in Graham Hancock's book because they both use the same source that uh, 20, was it 20, 2007, 2007 paper by George Langford. Um, the difference is that uh, Graham Hancock cites it and Josh Reeves, at least in the clips that he showed so far, does not. He takes that prose and he weaves it into his own narrative. He paraphrases and he quotes directly long passages, um, which is uh, the textbook definition of plagiarism. Maybe we should look up plagiarism. Let's see. Plagiarism. The practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. Um, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, it comes from the Latin. Plagiarius, kidnapper. <laughs> Wrongful appropriation, stealing a publication of another author's language, thoughts, ideas, or expressions, and the representation of them as one's own original work. Plagiarism is considered academic dishonesty and a breach of journalistic ethics. So in terms of like the nuts and bolts, you know, somebody stole words from me. Um, I think we do have a case of that here, but it's looks, looks more like it's Josh Reeves stealing words than Graham Hancock. But in terms of the stealing of ideas, I don't know. I would like to see Graham Hancock clarify that all this stuff just poofed into his head. Because um, that, that arrival story, I'm not buying it. Not buying it.